the Other Side podcast. So, yeah, I saw you in this venue in Liverpool, which was this. It's the size of someone's living room, isn't it? Um, yeah, let's go. I mean, I'll get a nice living room. I mean, you know, it's it's a nice little intimate room. Great for an acoustic show, um, but yeah. I have seen I, I have seen loud bands in there, and it's, it's uh, you know, there's many many venues like this around the world. So you you can you can just put a put a band on on a small stage and just let it rip and uh, pack about 40, 50 people in there, and that's a good time. And I have to say, you were so in your element, and you were so engaging with this, even though, as you say, it was such an intimate gig. You you really wanted to be there and i could tell you really wanted to speak to everyone there and you were so approachable it starts that... with the pizza if they if they shove good pizza into you then you just you want to perform you want to give back and uh you know my god that 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 pizza there at outpost is just so that's what that's what that's what it starts with if you if you shove a good pizza into the artist then the artist will give back uh, in more ways than one not just at the <laughs> show you know the, yeah eventually you have to give the pizza back as well yeah you get you take out what you put in you do you know, and it's uh, and they have a nice little uh, uh, arrangement for that as well. And so you were there, obviously, uh, as part of your solo project. Yeah, which is ongoing; it never ends. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly putting out solo records. I have a new one out now called "This Is Hell." I think it's my ninth one. I I, I sort of lost count. I, I I did a couple during the pandemic, um, and uh, so I just I just I have output. I'm going back into the studio again in May. Um, so yeah it's you know I, I, i've always found it easy and fun to write songs i think the fun makes it easy so it, it just it just it never ends um and so i take acoustic gigs whenever i can uh you know i, I enjoy them i love being a, a solo performer i like playing with a band too it's it's nice to do it both ways when it comes to the writing process is it very different compared to electric six so you're writing for your solo project uh, yes and no. I mean, a lot of these songs could be Electric Six songs. Um, Electric Electric Six, uh, you know, it's it's musically it's a collaborative thing. If if I write a piece of music uh, that goes into the band, generally it gets it gets changed around a lot. Um, Tate and John Nash write really good music that I write lyrics to, um, and so that that's usually how that works. It's it's kind of like the three of us, and um, you know, when we had Matt Tompkins in the band. Uh, he would he would wrote some amazing stuff too. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's more of a collaborative process with the band, of course. Uh, as far as the solo thing, you know, I'm not a great musician by any means, but uh, you know, I can play all the rock and roll instruments uh, at a below average level, and that's enough to make a, a rock and roll song. Well, that's all you need then. Below average, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I was there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's you know, it, it, I've found that when you have I, you know, I'm more of a songwriter and singer and performer than a musician. And so uh, the language of musicians is, is it's much different than the one I speak. So, um, you know, they hear different things than I hear. So for me, I just, I, I just hear a song. I don't care what, what so much, what the drum tone sounds like or the, or the splash cymbal tone, or, you know, I just, I just like getting the song out of my head. So you've never had any kind of formal training in music as such. It's more just kind of acting on instinct. Yeah, not at all. I mean, it's rock and roll. I mean, it's it's uh, it's the easiest form of music to play. So all you need to do is learn some bar chords and then, um, you know, writing lyrics and singing comes with time. You find your own voice and um, you just go out and do it. When it comes to finding your voice, because as I mentioned previously, you know, when I saw you, you were so in your element and you were enjoying yourself so much. Did that come immediately for you or did you kind of have to work up to that? When you very first started? Uh, I mean, it, you know, it takes time. I, I, my first singing voices were just weird and bizarre it was like when i was like in my late teens early 20s and then uh somehow i i don't know if i started listening to captain beefheart or kind of array, uh, arrived at the you know the lower register that i usually sing in now i mean i could also hit falsettos and do different different types of voices i guess but like you know when i sing with electric six that that voice kind of came i think after listening to captain beefheart a lot and just uh you know it's just happy accidents you get on stage and you you get reactions and um uh, you know, then you just gravitate towards what works and what's easy. I mean, it's, uh, and you know, I, I do have a fun time singing. I've learned to do it over time. Uh, you know, back when we would do like six, seven week tours with electric six, I blow my voice out. I just don't do that anymore. I, I know how to, I know how to hold back and when to hit the high notes and stuff. But I mean, yeah, there were times like, you know, around like 2007, 2008, 
you know, I'd go horse like three, four shows into the tour. And, uh, you know, it's just, that's, that's no way to do it. So, uh, you know, you, you live, you live long enough, you learn some things. What exactly? Cause I've always wondered this, what exactly does a musician do to, or sorry, a vocalist do to save their voice without sacrificing performance quality? Yeah. It's just not belting as much, not, not screaming as much. Um, you know, I used to, I used to do that, you know, feel, feeling like I needed to, feeling like I needed to give 110% every night. And you realize that, you know, there's, there's ways you can save it. And, uh, you know, it's like the Leo, Leo Messi approach, I guess, you know, you see him walking around and just, just not running. And then, you know, in the 60th minute, he just takes over the game or something like that. It's, it's, you know, I'm, so I am, yeah, I'm the Leo Messi, I'm the Leo Messi of vocalists. Um, so that's, that's how I approach it. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting a night. I'm, yeah, I'm getting a nice haircut today too. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, give me the messy. <laughs> he's trending right now on hashtag. Yeah, well, yeah. he's gonna be trending for a, a four years, I think. Oh, for the rest of his life. They're, you know, when they, when he dies, they're gonna place him on top of the tallest building in Argentina, and, uh, and you know, he'll, his corpse will just be like up there, and everyone will be wailing and no, Leo, no, Leo. Oh, yeah, it'll be like that. And then, 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 you know, like most bodies, he'll decompose and then we'll forget about him. <laughs> Is that what you hope for? That, that's what I want. Will I get it? Probably not. You can always ask. You could. I've been asking a long time. I mean, you know, like what I, you know, when we were, when we were on your radio and your television, I was asking to be bigger than Coldplay, but they, they wouldn't let us do that. So Coldplay you know. have a weird stranglehold. They do have a <laughs> that should be the name of their next album. <laughs> <laughs> Stranglehold by Coldplay. Yeah, no, yeah. you can ask politely. You don't always get it. No, I know. Well, that's got to be the show business, right? Yeah, it is show business. Um, saying that though, you're you've always had a long-standing popularity in the UK, haven't you? Well, I mean, not not before the popularity started. I mean, you know, I. I I'm 51 years old. I didn't, you know, you saw me on my, on television when I was 31. So like I've been doing this 20 years. So prior to being 31, uh, I did not, I did not have a stranglehold on the UK. Uh, I was, I, nobody knew me. I didn't know anybody. I, I remember I had an office job and I actually got to call somebody at the office in Birmingham. And I remember like speaking to a British person. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> they, they actually do talk like that. You know, like I thought it was just James Bond or whatnot. And, you know, she was like, lovely, smashing, cheers. And I was like, I just heard that. I just heard that. Uh, we so only that do it was... when Americans are around. <laughs> no, right. Yeah, it was great. Uh, so, yeah, I was just excited. You know, I worked at, I was a barista at a coffee house and a Scottish guy came in and I was just fascinated. I was like, you know, so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, now, you know, not now it's silly that I even thought that way. You know, now I go over there and I realize that it's not all that exciting. I'm kidding. I love it there. I do. I'm actually, uh, I, 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 would, I would live there. I'm looking for a tax shelter. So I'm looking. I'm looking to find a nice little tax shelter as I get older. Um, uh, I'd, stay, I'd stay clear of here at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah, you, you see where I'm going. I, my you know, my life, my life is um, like your life. It's going to be in in segments. And so the, there was a segment uh, before I, I went over there, and, uh, and you know, it, it was just a, it was a big mystery. And now now that mystery has been solved. Yeah, some things are best left unsolved. I think. But oh no, I like I, I will I will always go over there. I love it. I absolutely love it. I like the um i I like the uh i like the approach i can appreciate um kind of an outsider's perspective to the uk but when you when you're in it all the time like it's kind of a theory that i've got about your popularity is because you guys are flamboyant and you you know you give 110 percent and it's colorful and you know it's i think that always does well in the uk because aside from the aside from that stuff we're quite a gray country (laughs) The weather, uh, the food, the buildings. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know why things work and don't work uh, at various places. I, I mean, to me, it was just that we actually had a record label that like threw money at at you know lubing up the pipes so we could like you be on your television and radio. I don't think I, I still to you will never ever convince me that a band writing a song has anything to do with you know because we went through that whole like grunge area grunge period here in the in the states and like some of those songs got so watered down. Like, you know, you're talking about some of those radio hits, they were awful, but yet somebody decided to put them on the, on the radio. And, and it's just, if, if it's on the radio, it's going to be a hit. doesn't matter how good or bad it is. And so, you know, it's not really up to the band. It's up to who's. So we had a moment where they threw some money at us and, and, um, and, and then that, that was it. Now we've been able to keep touring and keep 
hitting it and we have we and our record label metropolis records has been so good to us and allowed us to like continue to put out records and so we have sort of a cult status now so in that regard we're doing it on our own but as far as like getting on your television and uh, that's just all money and that's just all somebody deciding to throw money at something i i'm a firm believer if you throw money at anything it will be a hit it doesn't have to be good mm. but then to have that longevity though you you do yeah i mean it, it, it depends it depends what, what like longevity like you know to this day i mean we have 19 albums up you know i have a very nice you know uh career following you know it's, it's nice to, nice to make money doing music but you know to this day there there are people like are they still going ah, 97 years ago they still <laughs> so, i mean you just yeah you, you can't uh you, you can win but you also can't win have you been have you spent much time in liverpool Aside from obviously, um, yeah, I, mean, I, feel like, I feel like I've been there enough. Um, you know, I've been to, um, you know, I, 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 I've been all over, I think, the city. I played various solo gigs. I mean, the band tends to play the academy over and over again. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I do I know it like the back of my hand? No, but I mean, I, I do feel like I, you know, I can get around and, you know, certainly have spent some amount of time there. Much more, much more time in Liverpool than, say, Norwich, you know. I've never, uh, you know, I think we played, I've never been to the city of Norwich and it intrigues me. And you've, uh, I was looking on your uh, social media, you're off to Ireland soon, is that right? Yeah, I, I, I'm doing, uh, I mean, I've done a, a full-blown UK solo tour where I hop on trains, but Ireland, it's it's a different animal, it's a different beast. Um, I have a lot of friends there and I just really, really enjoy just staying in, in Ireland. Nothing to do with Scotland. I mean, I love Scotland and England and Wales and all that, but just staying in Ireland, doing two weeks in Ireland is it's it's a pleasure. I mean, like the Irish pubs really are Irish pubs. They're just like the, the ones we have in the strip mall here in the states. So it's like you get to you get to do that in Ireland, and uh, it's just it's just fantastic. It's it's one of the best things I get to do. So I'm you know hashtag blessed. I went to um, in downtown Tokyo. I went to an Irish bar, and mm-hmm. they'd actually done a really convincing job sure yeah yeah they, like they, if yeah. you if you looked around you'd think oh okay i'm in ireland but there seems to be a disproportionate amount of japanese people yeah well i mean that that said you know i mean i, I you know when you go to some of these villages you know it, like uh, i think i'm going to like you know like clang 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 a kilty or something i've never been there so i'm expecting we have to be like you know old, old school proper ireland but you go to dublin there there's going to be bars there where you feel like you're in tokyo yeah you know i mean yeah yeah true so it's uh it just depends on where you're at yeah, Highland's good. I've been told by the locals, so stay away from uh, the Temple Bar area in, t- in Dublin. No, no, you're wrong. Go there. I'm just don't shoot the messenger. It's just what I'm hearing from the locals. Oh no, it's it's, it's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's. I was walking. I had. Uh, it was like two years ago. I had some drinks with my friend, and I was walking back to the hotel, and I walked through Temple Bar, and on the street, there's um, there's like a little, like a large cardboard plaque, like in one of the streets, it said danger, danger, high voltage, when we touch, when we kiss. And, and like, and I was like, holy shit. It was like, it's like midnight, you know? And I'm just, so I decided I'm going to get like a YouTube moment. I'm going to sit in front of this thing. Nobody's going to recognize me. And I'm going to, I'm going to like, I'm going to ask for like, uh, anyone who comes by is like, hey man, give me, give me 9,000 euros, man. <laughs> like, see what that, like in front of this thing. And I, you know, it was so stupid. I was, I was drunk, but, um, uh, yeah, I got like the only reaction I got. One thing I learned with that, because I've never, never done anything like that. Before, is that most people are most people are nice. They're like, "Sorry, I'd love to help you, but I don't have nine thousand euros." But then I had like this like German couple or something. They they just started like telling me I was a piece of shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was good. So yeah, you won't. I, I never posted anything. It was a dumb idea, but uh, you know, could have like, worked. It could have gone viral. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I was. It's, it was one of those moments where I was just like, "Am I am I dreaming this right now?" It's like this giant plaque with with these lyrics on it, like you know, and yeah, it's 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 amazing. You know, you, that 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 kind of shit never gets old. It must be surreal, especially the first few times when you are just walking down the street and you hear one of your songs blasting out of a car as it drives past, or you go into a bar and somebody's covering it, or the DJ's playing it. It doesn't happen here in the states, so I mean, um, you know. It, it, yeah, I, I I don't know. It, do, it doesn't happen that often. The weird one of the the, the thing I talked about in Dublin was was interesting, but the, the weirdest one ever was um, I, I, that we had a support band, um, I believe called Moco, like a long time ago. We're talking about like two thousand four, and then Moco had a 
a documentary made about them for like channel four. Like somebody decided Moco was going to be the next big band, nice guys, whatever. But like, um, they, so they, while they were supporting us, they wanted to have me in the, in the, in the documentary talking about, you know, about them and how great they are. So I filmed my, my scene and all that. And three years later, I don't, I don't even think they were existing, but like, I was like, I was drunk again in a hotel room. And I turn on channel four. It was like, you know, went from like, <laughs> went from like, you know, black screen to turning the TV on. And it's me. <laughs> like <laughs> the first thing I see is me. And I'll, uh, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And yeah, it was that. And, and like, yeah, I just, uh, that was, that was, a, I was not expecting <laughs> that, 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 that is one of the, you know, if you're not used to that, if you're not like a, like a just a lister where you, where you really are on TV all the time. And like you turn on the television, the first thing you see is you. It's 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 it's, it's, it's a weird experience. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thankfully that's that's only happened once. When you do stuff like that, uh, do you kind of keep track of it afterwards to see how it's doing, or do you kind of just you do your filming and then you just that's it for you? Uh, that's as far as you're uh, Yeah, it, it depends. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I I, uh, I had yeah that was the other part is like I, I had sort of forgot what like when i saw me i was like what the fuck is this like what, what, who like <laughs> that black mail time. tape yeah <laughs> but uh yeah that was uh that was that i mean yeah it was a long time ago and that's you know if so many uh so many support bands over the years and and uh you know we've been we've been lucky in that regard too of uh to see so many approaches to music meet a, a great deal of people um you know, and that's the other thing is when you have support bands and you have people that you like and enjoy when we lose a member in Electric Six, which is a six man band. And over time, you're going to go through members. We can like look at support bands like that guy's cool. That guy's a good bass player. Let's have him, you know. So it's like that's that's how that's how it works. So do you have like a kind of Rolodex of people you can call upon? Yes, it's it's called an iPhone. It's a it's <laughs> a it's all, all the contacts are in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't mean to be. I don't mean to be a smartass, but yeah, no, yeah, it's, we do have a, a Rolodex. Uh, there's, yeah, we're lucky in that regard, and uh, you know, it's 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 nice that our business model is such that, like, you know, we we travel around the world, we go to places, and it's like, you know, we can call people and say, hey, you want to go to Australia? And they're like, sure, I'd like to go to Australia. <laughs> that's it's just you know, it's nice. Cause that's the next stop for you, isn't it? Yeah, we leave in a couple weeks. Excited for that one. Yeah, I mean it's a lot of it's a lot of time uh, on airplanes. Uh, you know, it's it's unusual that way. Like you know, most most time you tour, you're in a vehicle, but here you fly between every city. So we've done it before, and uh, the shows we haven't been there in 15 years, so the shows have really sold really well. So it's it's going to be great. Yeah, Australia. It's like the distance between two cities. It's like the length of Europe. Yeah, from I mean, yeah, it it, it is actually nicer probably to be because it is like it's the size of. The states basically if you fly from sydney to perth it's like fly, flying from new york to la and but here in the states you know we drive those you know we it takes us like you know 10 days of, of playing like in des moines and omaha and denver and salt lake to get to california so it's like you know it'll be nice just to just to fly it instead of mm. instead of playing in salt lake city you guys are quite well known for your work ethic uh yeah i mean it's uh, to me touring's always been fun and making music's always been easy and fun so it's, I mean, it is a work ethic, but it's also not. It's like this is like the path of least resistance. And, um, it, you know, to me, uh, you know, a lot of us now have kids. So uh, we, there's just no scenario where we can do the six, seven week tour anymore. But um, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It always has been. And just like the certain aspects of the road that get to some people, uh, you know, like the same hotels or the same food over and over again. Like I thrive on that. Like I, I love it. So it's always it's suited me pretty well. Have you ever woken up with no idea what city you're in? I don't think so. Um, I'm usually pretty good about uh, uh, about that. I mean, w- once in a blue moon, I, I do know that experience. Uh, but um, yeah, for the most part, you know, like like anything, uh, you know, I, 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 no one would ever, no one would ever peg you know, like categorize me as as like a toxic twin, like a hard rock and roll partier. But even within that, like my my consumption of of alcohol has gone down over the years. You know, like I used to I used to vomit three four times a tour and you know now I haven't I haven't, I haven't thrown up in years so it's, 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 I'm I'm doing good I'm eating right and taking care of my bones. Touring seems pretty grueling. To me, it's not. Um, you know, it's I I don't mind waking up early. I, I do pretty good on little sleep. Um, you know, I always say that you know if, if I got three hours of sleep last night, 
we'll get three hours of sleep the next night, but eventually the tour gives you an opportunity to sleep till 3 p.m. if you want. And, um, you know, you see new places, you walk around. Um, I've made friends all over the world. So I've, I've never, you know, and again, I, I, it's just different people, different types. And I'm just not the type that the little minutia of tour gets to me because it just doesn't. Like, you know, if I'm in a shitty hotel, I was telling myself, well, t- tomorrow nights will be nice. And it usually is. Yeah, it's got to be ups and downs, I can imagine. Uh, yeah, it is. It's just you just I found the key is just get people get people on the same page with like that aspect of it. Um, and you know, also with our band, uh, you know, we uh, we're just not the sort of band that needs to rehearse like everything and get every little detail right. So uh, you know, I've always had really good musicians that like can can play these songs because they're not difficult. We just are a rock and roll bar band that occasionally plays bigger shows and that's the way i look at it just have fun have a good time up there i want to talk about um your most recent studio release for electric sick um obviously streets of gold which came out a couple of years ago sure um what made you decide to go down the covers route uh that that label cleopatra approached us uh and they they threw a, a a decent figure at us to make to do it but i think that what they do is they that's kind of their model is they, they have, um, they get placements in movies. It's much cheaper, like a song, you know, like don't change by in excess. It's much cheaper for them to put that, find that, get that in, in a movie or television to have our version of it than like, than elect, than in excess, or it's cheaper for the, the, the shows for, for, you know, so like if you're doing a TV show, you have the cover version of, of don't change. Uh, you pay electric six a lot less than you would the estate of Michael Hutchins to put, you know, to put that, uh, to put that out so that's kind of the business model that's what Cleopatra that's one of the things Cleopatra does is they they work they work cover songs and get them placed in movies so that that was how it, that was the whole impetus uh, that said it was a great project it was fun um, and then uh, yeah we and E6 has a new studio record coming out this year finally it'll be our first one in in, in five years so um, yeah we're you know finally getting that out and we're, we're pretty excited about it cool are you allowed to say the title yet or is it it's called Turquoise uh it's a title track and um yeah it comes out on metropolis uh so it's i think it's like our 15th i don't know yeah let's say 15th release with the <laughs> <laughs> i can't I, I can't keep track anymore but uh uh yeah it's five years since the last one since bride of the devil and then uh you know hopefully we'll do uh another one uh in you know a shorter time than five years but if it's if it takes five years that's what it takes is that how you look at it when you're doing a studio album do you say like we're not going to have it necessarily out by this date, but just when it's ready. Well, it used to be we we it used to be we were doing an album a year, and we did that for like ten years, maybe even longer. And it was like we just never really slowed down. I think it's just a combination of you know kids and COVID like finally slowed us down. Like the um, and it's just yeah. I mean, when you have kids, you just can't work. You can't work at that pace anymore. So uh, it's fine. I mean, we really feel like we've proved our point. You know. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we'll just we'll get the get the records out at, as they come out now. I see. So you're just taking more of a when it's ready. We're not forcing this. We're not. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Like I, I don't even like we we just it was more just like kind of motivated to keep going. We felt like if if we stop releasing the records, that people would forget about us. And then you eventually you you arrive at a point where like you're in your fifties, you're you you have a nice little resume, you're established, and so it's like yeah, you don't have to work as hard. Um, or you don't have to, you don't have to put out a record if you don't want to. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm already starting to write and, you know, hopefully it'll get, uh, we'll, we'll get to working on it soon. Are you one of those people who can sit down with no ideas and then just wait for the idea to come? Or are you someone who inspiration can strike in the middle of the night and you're like, get me to a guitar quick. It's all of it. I mean, you know, I, I do, I like with the iPhone, you can just, you can do a sound recording and so you remember what's in your head or you can just write down a, a lyric that you think of. Um, uh, you know, and if I do sit down with the guitar and like, I'm frustrated for like 15 minutes, if I wait another 15 minutes, something will come up. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've had a really productive week this week in terms of songwriting. So it's, it's, it's a win. It's good. That's cool. I've been speaking cause I always like to ask musicians about their writing process cause the similarities fascinate me, but then also the differences fascinate me as well. Like I've had some people who they say like they can just hear the whole song in their head. Oh yeah, I mean I've had I've had those I've had those moments too. I've had dreams, you know. Like I mean, you dream lyrics. You, you um, 
if we have a song uh, called Two Dollar Two, and uh, the, the first lyric is uh, "She was my garter melee man man," and I I don't know what that I mean like that I dreamt that it was like you know she w- I don't know who Garter Maley is if that's even a name but it was like she was my garter melee man man I, that was it was like vivid in my head woke up and I remembered it and so now that's in that song I have no idea what it means um, so yeah that's uh, that, that's how that can work too. Jimi Hendrix used to do that, didn't he? Apparently, he had dreams. Well, yeah, and then he would write them down. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, and take I mean, them on tour. I, yeah, um, I, you know, I think you, some of it, you know, he he doesn't get enough credit as a lyricist. I mean, some of some of those lyrics are pretty cool. Yeah, who else um, is kind of a big influence for you? I mean, I know you've obviously talked about um, your love for Queen. Who's maybe kind of less? Uh, well, it's funny, less like, uh, well known, but you is kind of influenced you. Over the years. Uh, well, I think I said like Captain Beefheart was like a, more of a vocal, but uh, you know, um, when I first heard Trout Mask, Trout Mask Replica by him, uh, that was one. That was the moment I realized that an album or music can sound like anything. It can it, like it can sound bizarre. It can like and like just be completely unique. And so, when I heard that record, it really shaped like the uh, you, you break out of the box of like thinking like a song needs to sound like this. You know, I was like, wow, you can you can do whatever you want. You can throw any approach to it. And so that that was that was good for me in that in that regard. Um, you know, it's uh, when I was in high school, I was just it was all R.E.M. At the, like that's R.E.M. R.E.M. Steady diet of R.E.M. And, you know, I've, I've since grown out of that and stuff. But I'm, uh, I just became Instagram follower of Michael Stipe. And uh, I found out he was I live like two blocks from the Brooklyn Museum. And, and he was at the museum like a week ago. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, that said, uh, you know, I, I, I don't I don't know if it would have the same effect on me meeting him as it would have 30 years ago. But um, I still like have that uh, uh, association with him. Um, I don't know, like I was into the Pixies when they were coming up that that kind of you can hear a lot of that in our in our in our uh, music. Um, mm. Talking heads, um, you know, but, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, I think. Like the Sarah Palin approach to music, just like oh, whatever's in front of me. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's uh, I, I don't I don't really overthink it or, or like actively seek out music anymore. But you know, if if I hear a good song, it's a good song. How do you normally discover music now? Then does it just kind of pop up on Spotify or when you drive in, or do you? Yeah, drive uh, a driving or you know, um, a, a, a more on tour than anything else because I'm actually in clubs. I mean, it, it's been so long since I've actually gone to a show, um, you know, at a venue. So like, um, where I'm not playing it, you know what I mean? So it's like, if I'm on tour, then you'll hear like the, you'll hear the mix from backstage and like, Oh, that's a good, that's a good song. And then you research it and find it. But, um, yeah, I mean, when I was in my twenties, I was just, you know, I couldn't get enough. I was at a radio DJ, had access to the, the, the library uh, of music there. I would buy CDs all the time. And now it's just, you know, you move on, you have other interests, you know, not to say that I'm not interested in music, but I just, uh, I just don't uh, follow this or that as, as closely as I used to. When you do go to gigs, do you, are you able to switch off from thinking, Oh, I'm not sure I would have done it that way. Or, you know, maybe the sound isn't quite right in this venue. Or do you find that you can just enjoy it purely as a music fan? Uh, um, Oh yeah, I, I yeah, I enjoy. I, I'm I'm the uh, if there's a least a less particular person about sound in a venue, I would love to meet that person. But I just don't. Just doesn't. It's not something I think about. I've never I've never had bad sound on stage because I just I I just enjoy having some beers and singing. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I mean, like it's very very rare that like I'm I'm bummed out by a venue. I I can't think of a, a time that it was. And if it's a really shitty venue, I love it too. I I, I love the challenge. What I mean is, like, when you go along as a as a concert goer, as a as a fan, do you find that you can can you switch off from seeing music as work, and can you just oh, purely enjoy it? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, again, it's just the uh, you know, I I don't uh, I, it's been so long since I've like gone to see a band. Uh, but yeah, I think I can. I don't uh, I, I try not to be too critical of anybody or like um, you know, think about it. I. I the last last show I went to was to see my friends in uh, of of Montreal like four years ago, and it was great. It was so much fun to like you know, to, to you know, even though I knew a couple of the guys in the band, like it was just so much fun to to see a band and be in the crowd. And that that literally might have been the last show I've seen. Because I um I know an author who says he can't enjoy books anymore. 
Um, I, I'm not an author, but I, I also don't enjoy books, so I can, uh, you know, <laughs> understand that. Because <laughs> yeah. it's that kind of fear of making your making your passion your job. I, I I've never had that fear, never so I, that fear. I, I, I can't can't relate to that. Yeah, I've never uh, I've never been self critical or felt like this was all that important. Like, you know, uh, yeah, I've talked to many musicians over the years and like, Hey, when's your album coming out? Oh, I'm not going to release it till it's ready. And I'm like, okay, good luck with that. <laughs> <You know? It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, I've like, you know, put out, you know, a thousand, you know, half thought out records and that's, that's fine. So, um, yeah, it's just a different approaches. I think that puts you in a good place in the musical landscape though. Cause when I think electric six, I think fun. Yeah. And well, that's, that's, yeah, the, and that's uh, that's what we've always tried to do. So, um, yeah, I just uh, I've never like uh, I've never romanticized music or rock and roll to that point where it's like everything has to be perfect or everything has to be this or that. I just you know have some fun. Yeah, that, that, that's basically it. Did you ever have that phase though? Maybe pre being thirty one. Did you? Maybe kind of your <laughs> would you have like an angsty teen mode or maybe in the probably 20, yeah in the 20s, yeah probably. Was the kind of yeah well, I mean, to, to be fair yeah like yeah yeah maybe I would have thought differently around the age of seventeen or eighteen but um you know uh, that was so long ago <laughs> 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 yeah um yeah and I, I've also found and this, a lot of people tell you this that like when you meet generally when you meet people in especially in the music industry or people people who are like really famous or um, musicians who have been doing it a long time, they're generally just lovely people because, you know, they understand that the key to longevity is, is empathy for the people around you and understanding that like, you know, that, you know, in order to do a show, there's the lighting person, there's the the sound guy, there's the people in the venue, there's the bartenders and and just, just don't be a jackass. <laughs> it's just like, that's his number one rule. And like, you know, that's, that's, that's been good for us over the years. Like people, the venues get excited to see us just because they're like, you know, like you guys are one of the easiest bands we work with. And so I, I was like hearing that. There does seem to be though a substrate of people who blow up very, very quickly. Yeah. And then people find out what they're really like. And then you never hear about them again. Yeah. I mean, it could, it could go any number of ways. Um, you know, some uh, once in a blue moon, people who, you know, people who are high, strong and, uh, you know, uh, you know, they, they keep, they keep going as well. I, I don't know. I've just found in my experience that, uh, you know, the, the, the bigger the name, the, uh, the generally the nicer they are. You don't have to name names, but have you ever been disappointed by somebody who you, you looked up to the image of them and then you got to meet them in person and thought, ah, uh, can't, can't say, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't think so. I, I, um, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I never had, uh, that kind of, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I never had heroes per se, especially in music. So yeah, I've never had that experience where, wow, that person's a dick or that person let me down. Just, just it hasn't happened. <laughs> so yeah, I would, uh, I would, uh, all right, that'll probably get cut then. I would cut uh, it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. just explain now. Uh, there was just a very brief segment of the conversation that, um, I've decided to cut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which will sit on my hard drive for years and no one yep. wants to hear it. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Fix it in post. Yeah, exactly. Um, with that in mind, do you, how has social media changed the way the band does business? Uh, I mean, I think the same, you know, the same way it changes it, the way everybody does business. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we are, we are at blessed to be at the point where we're t trying to take less shows, trying to do less. And so for every person who's like, you guys need to be on TikTok it's like no we don't because we're trying to do less <laughs> you know? so, so it's like you know we are you're just uh you know you solve that problem i mean it you know it took me a while to get a facebook account when it when it finally came out and then i realized you know for me i have a lot of fun with it uh, you know using it as a marketing tool I have, a, I have a blast with it actually and so you know and then insta took me a, a while to get on but i use that as well um so yeah i don't i don't stress about it i don't worry about it so much i don't you know i'm certainly in my day-to-day -day life i'm not the type of person that needs to put everything on on instagram or facebook um so you know i kind of use that approach to uh marketing as well so you're not trying to find how to get the next viral moment on tiktok you don't lie not a, at night thinking not about it. not at all not at all yeah I, it, it's you know it, it comes comes down to i've had I, i've had uh, x amount of attention and fame 
uh, you know, in my life, you know, I'm certainly not the most famous person ever, but uh, I've had enough to the point where I no longer seek it, you know, and I, I enjoy, I enjoy touring. I enjoy what comes with it, but you know, I do not need that level of like, you know, viral fame or whatever, or to be on television again. If it never happens again, it's fine. I can imagine where you are now. It's, it's a nice level because everywhere you go, people do know who you are and you know, you can play to a venue of very loyal fans. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great in that regard. I mean, it, yeah, there's the, the money. Now I would like more money, <laughs> but, 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 but fame, uh, fame not so much so you have to yeah how can you get more money without being more famous and so, you know so that that's the question that that i like mm, get a yeah. day job i've been I've, you know, yeah you could get a day job uh, my guitar player the white wolf got me into the stock market uh, about 10 11 years ago and so i've been obsessed with that so i'm always trying to i was trying to break big there uh, but you know other than that there's only so many hours in the day okay so just very quickly then tell me tell me what's next for electric six you already mentioned the album uh yeah turquoise comes out i think august or september um we're going on tour in australia we'll be doing some uk touring in uh uh like early july uh so like a festival and some clubs and then obviously we'll come back um for november december like we always do and it might i'm guessing it'll be the 20th anniversary of fire um like we're doing in australia i mean i i you know our our agent and the venues will decide if we're doing that but we can play fire so it's it's uh it's easy enough to do so that, that'll be the, the two uk tours that we'll do this year july and then november, november december great well i'll try and catch you yeah man yeah i mean uh, you know they just hit the academy button and we're at all the we're at all the academies for like a week uh so it's a lovely purgatory for us but uh <laughs> yeah we enjoy it all right thanks so much for doing this yeah thank you and good good luck with uh with with everything you're doing and like i said if you need if you need to talk again i'm, I'm here for you okay thank you the Other Side Podcast, hosted by John Stone. Interviews with songwriters, filmmakers, authors, and more. If you're a creative with an interesting story to tell and you'd like to be on the podcast, you can email OtherSideStudios at Outlook.com. Please include some info about yourself and links to your work.